Fareed Zakaria GPS, seen in Sunday morning, 10 Eastern and Pacific. Now for our What in the World segment. What got my attention was Iran, which seems as assertive and confrontational as ever. Take a look at this week alone. Iran held its second set of war games in a month, a display of military might meant to scare off its enemies. And then there was President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Given a platform to speak to the world at the United Nations this week, he ranted and raved. The Iranian president spent most of his 35-minute speech berating the U.S. as the world's only, quote, nuclear criminal, under, unquote, while downplaying his nation's nuclear ambitions. Meanwhile, the U.S. still doesn't have a deal with its counterparts on the Security Council to impose new, tougher sanctions on Tehran for flouting U.N. nuclear agreements. But the question becomes, how much good would additional sanctions be anyway? There's a very disturbing report in the Washington Post this week that points out that some of the sanctions might not be working as intended. Indeed, these sanctions may be enriching the very people and institutions they were intended to cripple. Now, to be clear, one part of the sanction system is working. Many Western companies have left or are leaving once current contracts run out. Others have greatly reduced their business in Iran. Giants in their field like Pricewaterhouse, Ernst & Young, Siemens, GE, Caterpillar, Credit Suisse, Hewlett Packard, the list goes on and on. They're all out of Iran or substantially reduced in their activities. And even more impressive, perhaps, is the list of companies working in the lucrative oil and gas sector in Iran that have pulled out or greatly reduced their business or said they won't sign any new contracts for work there. ExxonMobil, Luke Oil of Russia, Ingersoll Rand, ENI, Italy's biggest oil and gas concern, Halliburton, Reliance, the Indian refining giant, Royal Dutch Shell, and Total, one of France's biggest companies. The Western companies pull out, the Iranian companies can't do the work, so the oil flow dries up. Sounds great. Except that's not how it seems to be working out. Much of what used to be done by foreign companies has now been taken over by local companies that are owned and run by Iran's Revolutionary Guard. These companies are now minting money, and the Revolutionary Guard are gaining greater control over Iran's economy, society, and politics. You see, if you thought the Revolutionary Guard were just the thugs who beat protesters up, you only know part of the story. After the Iran-Iraq war in the 1980s, the Guard got into many sectors of the nation's commerce, construction, transportation, trade, oil and gas. It is now one of Iran's biggest owners of business. One of the Guard's top officials, Yadola Javani, boasted to state-run media recently, quote, today the Revolutionary Guards are proud to have such knowledge and capability that we can easily replace big foreign companies like Total and Shell. As with all things out of Iran, we might want to take Mr. Javani's words with a grain of salt. While the guards' companies may have won lucrative no-bid contracts to do the work, the question still does remain whether they can actually do it. Many observers don't believe the guard has all the technology or the know-how to accomplish what Western firms were doing. With the help of Western companies in the past, Iran was able to export millions of barrels of oil a day. If that kind of outcome can be maintained, it would be yet another coup for the Revolutionary Guard and a blow to those who believe that sanctions are the way to punish Iran.